Hey everybody, Alan Weber here from the mayor's office, wearing my folk art mask from a Nigerian craftsman. Thank you. Great piece of art. And important as we face COVID-19. Uh, there's a lot to talk about today, Friday afternoon. The first thing that I want to say is that almost every sentence I'm going to say to you today will, will end up uh, with the words, because of COVID-19, because we are still in the throes of this public health emergency. Uh, earlier this week, the United States recorded the highest single day increase in COVID-19 cases across the country. States bordering us, Texas, Arizona, are on high alert. The governor of Texas has had to walk back his opening of Texas and tell people don't go to bars, stop going out so much. Our governor, who was way ahead of the curve and saw this coming, has put uh, pumped the brakes, put a hold on things opening up. Uh, she had thought if we kept things under control, July 1 would be another reopening date. It turns out with the spike in cases that we're seeing across the country and in some parts of New Mexico, she's had to hit pause. And so let's take a minute and review what's going on. Wear a mask, wear a face covering when you go out in public. It's the governor's order. The city council passed such an order. If you don't have a mask, we'll get you one free. Uh, I got a note here that says in the last uh, little while since that ordinance passed, city of Santa Fe has passed out 18,000 free face covers. If you need one, come to the city's uh, welcome uh, office where we, the tourism department has set up a place to welcome visitors, the visitor center. You can get a free face covering. Um, I, st I drove into work the other day. I saw some folks without face coverings. I keep some in my car, handed them out. Very nice folks. They said, thank you. We appreciate it. We didn't have a face covering. Now we do. It's nothing to get mad about. It's a courtesy, it's a respect thing, and it's a safety thing. Now, we've got to stay safe. If we want to open our businesses and our restaurants, if we want people to go, go back to work and get a paycheck uh, and put food on their table, we have to stay safe. Uh, so let's remember that. Uh, that, rem that brings me to uh, something that we all need to get behind, and that is the Santa Fe Promise. Santa Fe Promise, this is our poster. It says, we promise safe, open, together. If you look at the logo, there are hearts that say we're in this together and a star because we are going to step up and be the star of keeping people safe. We promise safe, open, together. We've got these new posters will be showing up in businesses and restaurants and commercial establishments, in stores and shops. We also have a, what's called a rack card because you can put them in racks in lobbies of uh, hotels in English, in Spanish, and it says, safe, open, together. This is the Santa Fe promise. We will stay safe ourselves and keep each other safe as we combat the spread of COVID-19 in our community. You could almost say we saw this coming. We knew there would be a spike in cases as we opened up. It is almost inevitable. The question is, how big a spike? So when you go out, please remember, it's very, very simple. Put on a face cover, wash your hands, use hand sanitizer, Practice social distance. If we can keep COVID-19 under control, we can continue to open. And we do it together. When we do it together, we get businesses able to survive tough times. We get people back to work. They get a paycheck. They put food on their table. They're able to shop for their families. They keep Santa Fe's economy moving forward, but we do it in a way that's safe. That's our promise. So please, please do your part. Step up. If you see a stranger, somebody from out of town, somebody who looks like they're not really quite understanding the Santa Fe promise, our code of conduct, 
politely tell them, you can get a free mask, you can get a free face cover. That's how we do it in Santa Fe. That's how we keep our infection spread rate low. Big shout out to the World Central Kitchen out at the community college. Speaking of because of COVID-19. Because of COVID-19, we had a lot of folks who needed food, a lot of folks who weren't getting meals. Out at the community college, Robert Egger, a nationally known expert on public kitchens, the World Central Kitchen, they celebrated this morning their 50,000th meal. 50000. That's how many meals they've cooked up out at the community college. They've worked with chefs in Santa Fe. They've brought young people in to be part of the culinary arts program. Tremendous achievement, great success, helping people who need help because of COVID-19. And the World Central Kitchen gets a great thank you from all of us. Um, let's see, what else is going on? A um, few other shout outs. I got a stack of material to share with you. There is a new program, thanks to PNM. They will be helping low-income customers pay their energy bill. They get $150 help from PNM on Tuesdays. Call this number, 505-967-8045, 505-967-8045, and you can call that number, find out how you can get help with your energy bill. Help a neighbor in need. Another thing uh, to be aware of, Santa Fe Police Department, Operation Slow and Quiet. Again, because of COVID-19, I think, uh, our streets are less crowded and therefore we're getting more drag racing, more cut out mufflers, more people going fast, more people ignoring speed limits, more people uh, racing in Santa Fe. It's caused a real problem for neighborhoods where people want peace and quiet. They want to be outdoors wearing a face mask if they're not with their family. And they want to be able to have a beautiful summer. Noise from cars and motorcycles makes that very, very difficult. So Operation Slow and Quiet from the Santa Fe Police Department wants to remind drivers that racing on streets violations turn into a mandatory court appearance a violation of the loud muffler ordinance could result in an $81 penalty. So please, if you're, if you're using your car to make noise with your muffler cut out, with your motorcycle, please cool your jets. Slow it down, quiet down, operate slow and quiet, respect your neighbors, be peaceful, keep things within the bounds of fun, but not at somebody else's expense. Piece of good news, Afar Magazine, which uh, promotes experiential travel, has named Santa Fe number three on a list of the best small cities in America. So even with COVID-19, people are looking for places to go, uh, to have a good time, to have some fun, to stay safe, but be open. Afar Magazine has said Santa Fe ranks number three in the country. Coming up tomorrow, Saturday, uh, noon to four o'clock, a virtual pride celebration. Ordinarily, we'd have a great parade. There'd be fun music on the plaza, but because of COVID-19, virtual pride uh, is taking place. Uh, It starts at noon, runs till four. Uh, There's a terrific proclamation that I have the pleasure of reading tomorrow. Uh, So let's all take a minute and celebrate just how far we've come with pride. Uh, Councilor Lindell was saying at the council meeting Wednesday night when she was a young person uh, dealing with gender issues and with, uh, let's face it, uh, prejudice, bias uh, against uh, people who are gay, lesbian, transgender, um, whatever the designation anyone chooses for himself or herself or their self, Uh, It was a hard thing. Pride was, oh, I guess we got to go do it again because you could get, uh, you could get assaulted. Today, pride is something we can all celebrate and we all want to celebrate. We all want to recognize the contributions and the rights, the civil liberties, the, uh, the growth in recognition of equality 
from the uh, LGBTQ plus community. So this weekend, tomorrow, noon to four, virtual pride because of COVID-19. Coming up, Friday, July 3, next week, city will be closed in honor of the 4th of July. There will be regular trash and recycling pickup, uh, but this year there will not be our traditional fireworks show because of COVID-19. Uh, so we'll have to have some virtual fireworks. Uh, we'll have to have some fun at home, a cookout, a barbecue, a family celebration, recognizing that some of the COVID-19 that we've uh, seen recently isn't coming from visitors. It's coming from families in Santa Fe where there are people giving COVID-19 to each other. So don't think that just because you're related, you won't uh, potentially uh, infect somebody else. It's, a, it's still a danger. Uh, Wednesday night, we had a very, very long and uh, complicated and very worthwhile, very gratifying city council meeting. Uh, we voted on continuing the, uh, the uh, shelter, the emergency shelter at Midtown for people who are experiencing homelessness. I stopped by there this morning on my way back from the central kitchen. Uh, it's running very smoothly thanks to the hard work of Regina Wheeler, Kira Choa, John Munoz, a group of volunteers, people from our library staff are kicking in, helping out. I ran into one gentleman who said, you know what, I am getting my life together. I've been uh, sober and clean. I'm working now. Uh, I've got a job. I'm applying for another job, and it wouldn't be possible if I didn't have this shelter on the Midtown campus. So that got voted to be continued and using some federal dollars from the CARES Act so that it's not all Santa Fe money going into keeping it going. But it's a very important step to keep COVID-19 from spreading in the community of people who are without shelter. It's very hard to shelter at home if you don't have a home. So these folks are safe. They get three meals a day. They've got a job chart where they pitch in a list of chores to do uh, on the campus, cutting weeds, cleaning up, taking care of the buildings and grounds. It's a something everybody in Santa Fe should be very, very, very proud of. And a, a big thank you to the folks who are making it go. Uh, we also voted uh, to create a framework where businesses are all over the city, not just downtown, if there's a concentration of restaurants or uh, stores, shops, merchandise places on a street, they can get a petition together and request the city's traffic engineer to analyze the possibility as an experiment to close that street and let them put tables, if it's a restaurant, in the street. It's a really important idea. So far, we don't have any streets closed, so don't get too far ahead of ourselves. It hasn't happened yet. But we await petitions from stores, shops, and restaurants that say, if we could put us, uh, some chairs and tables in the street, we could bring some people back to work. Uh, I had breakfast a week or so ago at one of my favorite restaurants downtown, and the, the uh, owner, the, the proprietor said, if I had a street closure in front of my restaurant, I'd put some tables out there. I'd bring back five or six people. I could have somebody at the front of the restaurant. I could bring back some people cooking, some wait staff, maybe some people cleaning up. Five or six jobs coming right back, people getting a paycheck, putting food on their table, putting clothes on their kids' backs, getting ready for uh, essential expenses like health care or making sure a vehicle runs or a a repair in their home gets taken care of. It's employment, it's jobs, it's paychecks. And so uh, it's an experiment. It's uh, available to anybody on any commercial area. If you have a street where you've got a store, a shop, or a restaurant, you want to get your neighbors together and say, you want to try it? We could put some, some uh, restaurant uh, sh uh, seats and tables out there, maybe bring some people back to work. You got to get up a petition. You got to show it to the city traffic engineer. He'll make the decision about whether or not you can have this experiment. Uh, there was just an article uh, in the paper about Messia doing this down in uh, uh, outside Las Cruces. So, lots of people are saying because of COVID-19, our restaurants are under uh, able or are under permitted to have floor space 
and more people want to eat outdoors than indoors because of COVID-19, let's try an experiment. So that's what's going on. Uh, there was also a lot of debate, very, very, very articulate debate, led by Councillor Garcia, not so much debate as discussion, about where we are in the country and here in Santa Fe around history, all the different versions of history, all the different cultures, all the different folks who are part of the fabric of our diverse city, the city different, made up of people who are different. Uh, what about monuments? What about statues? What about healing? What about reconciliation? And uh, Councillor Garcia was very articulate about pain and the cure to pain is love. That's how we get past pain. Uh, I tried to give a little bit of a window into the order that I issued, the emergency order uh, regarding uh, the statue of Don Diego, regarding the uh, obelisk and the Kit Carson obelisk. And if you go back in time, it's worth revisiting what was going on uh, a short time ago. All over the country, of course, we're seeing uh, statues attacked and pulled down by crowds of people at the risk of somebody being hurt, injured, or killed. We're seeing clashes between protesters and counter-protesters. Down in Albuquerque, shortly before we were asked to make a decision about Santa Fe, there was a clash between a group of protesters and counter-protesters. It endangered both groups. It could have endangered the police, who are put in a very difficult position of trying to break up crowds that want to get at each other. And ultimately, and very tragically, it ended up in an individual being shot. And so here we are in Santa Fe with the same predicament. We're part of the national fabric. We're part of the national debate. What is the right decision on very short order? We don't have time for public hearings, debates. We don't have time for voices to weigh in. There has to be a decision. And my decision, based on public safety and with the statement that there is never a single statue in Santa Fe that is worth one person's life. Uh, to get the statue of Don Diego safely removed, we tried our best to safeguard the obelisk. Unfortunately, some person uh, took the law into their own hands and vandalized it. And that is uh, something the police are investigating because vandalism by anybody under any circumstances is not acceptable. It's not just a crime. It's also an attack on our sense of community. And that's where we are today. We are poised for a discussion about our sense of community. Uh, at the council hearing the other night, uh, we heard from more than 60 people who wanted to talk about where we are as a city, as a community, and where the country is as we assess all the different histories that blend together to make our shared history, all the values that we have in common, and some things that divide us. I'm not particularly compelled to divide people. <laughs> I don't think we need hate. I don't think we do better with anger. I don't think we move forward with racism. I think we need peace and reconciliation, which means creating a space where we can have that discussion as a community. It happened two years ago when the Entrada was peacefully voted to be retired by the Caballeros with the support of the Fiesta Council, with the support of the Archdiocese, with the encouragement of the uh, Native American community and the uh, All Pueblo Council of Governors with the support of the city of Santa Fe, a compact was signed saying we have had pain, we look forward to peace and reconciliation. That's where we are now. We've had pain. We've had division. We've had anger. Now it's time to lower voices, to take a breath, to think about all the families in northern New Mexico who share so much. So many different families have come together across the generations to become a united people. Uh, we are really all one family. And the more we realize that what looks dangerous to you is really important to me, we look at each other's world through each other's eyes, we experience history through each other's experiences and learn to respect and understand uh, that we really are all in this together. That the past if we face it honestly, is something that we can make our peace with and move to a future of reconciliation and common shared values. So that, that was the debate, or that was the discussion. More than 60 people, a wide array of opinion. 
Now, if you listen to the voices of Santa Fe, you hear voices from all parts of our community. And that is partly what makes this such a hard problem. There is not one right answer. The one right answer for me is to keep people from getting hurt, to maintain the peace, to make sure that our, our works of art are not destroyed in a moment of anger, and that we preserve the opportunity to have an ongoing conversation about statues and, and obelisks and memorials, and potentially a new museum, a museum of truth and reconciliation, where we put objects, older objects that need to be discussed in a new context, and we commission some new works of art, not necessarily about people, but about a common experience. You know, most of our objects in public tend to be of a hero, a hero who did something uh, that brought them fame. Usually has to do with military victories. Uh, but there are so many people in our community who deserve recognition, not through military conquest, but through acts of teaching in our schools acts of preaching in our faith community, acts of crossing the boundaries of all of our diverse members of this community. That's the heart and soul of Santa Fe. That's the heart and soul that we saw rise up together after the India Palace was vandalized and the Singh family made to feel they weren't welcome. People came together, raised more than $100,000 in the blink of an eye to reassure the Singh family that we had their backs, we have our arms around them, we want them to know how much we care for them. That's Santa Fe. That's who we are as a community. We choose love and compassion over anger and hate. A couple other words real quick. I forgot to give a big shout out to Julian Williams. I want to come back to the Santa Fe promise. So. Before there is a campaign, there has to be a logo. And before there is a logo, there's got to be a talented designer. Well, the person who is behind this is a young man named Julian Williams. He is a graduate of the Santa Fe University of Art and Design. He is currently living in Amsterdam. He went over there to work for Nike because he's that good. They hired him to be part of their design shop in Amsterdam. He then, I think, got hired away to work for Tommy Hilfiger. He's now part of uh, Bob Borden's team. Bob Borden, brilliant branding guru right here in Santa Fe. I reached out to Bob, who reached out to Julian and said, how can you make a logo that expresses the heart of Santa Fe? We promise, safe, open, together. If you look at the logo, you see the hearts that are in the design and the star that is Santa Fe. So a big thank you to Bob and to Julian, a, uh, a graduate of SFUAD, working overseas right now. we got to bring him home, folks. Uh, let's get our talented people back to Santa Fe. If they've left, let's turn them into boomerangs. Uh, that's about it for today. Please remember, COVID-19 is spiking. It's not something we can take for granted. We can't take our eyes off how important it is for us to stay safe so we can stay open and benefit together. Let's put people back to work. Let's get paychecks in people's pockets. Let's get families having a better economic future. The way we do it, it really works. When you go out, put on some kind of a face cover. When you go home, use some hand sanitizer, wash your hands, practice social distance, enjoy the blessings of living in Santa Fe, a beautiful weekend, uh, but stay safe. Care for each other, care for yourselves, care for your family, take care of Santa Fe. We're doing good. Take care, Santa Fe.